I'm uh, Jonas Dahlberg. I'm sales manager at um, Microsoft in Sweden for AI. And um, I will just very briefly introduce the area and then I will hand over to one of our customers, Comhem, Dennis. So um, he will share with you what they have done. I just want to start with framing thing. I think um, for many of you, including myself, that has been in the industry for quite some time, uh, things are changing, and things are changing very, very fast. Um, I tend to remember BI projects 15 years ago. They took a lot of time, and the uh, capability currently allows us to innovate a lot faster than we have done before. Um, part of this is that data doubles every second year, the world's data, and that goes for the, the enterprise data state as well. We can really see that, that AI technologies is starting to be used. We have a lot of projects going on all around the world within manufacturing, finance, telcos, media, everywhere. And then cloud is, of course, here, has been here for a while, but we really see how it allows the flexibility and scale that we need to really build these type of solutions. And the interesting part is, of course, when these three meet, when you combine the enterprise data, new type of data sets, with the capabilities of artificial intelligence, both cognitive services as well as uh, machine learning. And when you combine that with the scalability and, and flexibility of the cloud, that's where interesting things happen. So, but instead of me talking around this, I will invite one of our customers, Dennis, to just describe what they've been doing. Please yeah. welcome Dennis. Sure, thanks, thank you. So, I'm uh, Dennis, I'm head of the BI team at Comhem. Uh, we're right now 15 uh, happy uh, guys and girls uh, developing BI for Comhem. Uh, just for, uh, for those of you who don't know what Comhem, who we are and what we do, we're a telco, we're one of the larger telcos. We have a couple of different areas that we work in. We go uh, for end customers, consumers. Uh, approximately a million customers uh, today. We go with business to business services. Uh, and of course, we have a, a great network uh, that we're really proud of and that can deliver uh, data and communication services to all over Sweden. And then the uh, latest uh, addition to this company is that we bought Boxer. So we have Boxer Robert running around in our hallways right now. And it's really nice. Um, but that's not really why we're here. We want to talk about why we go, went with Azure, why we went with cloud, and why we looked at this opportunity. We have, a very, we have an old uh, warehouse that we've been running since 2004, and it's currently running on SQL Server 2016. Uh, and we got some really bad PowerPoint slides. But anyway, um, we get new demands uh, on, uh, on visualizations. We get new demands on advanced analytics. Uh, that we couldn't uh, handle. We got new data sources popping up uh, everywhere. Every, everyone else in IT is also going microservices and doing s smaller things, more agile things, and we need to be able to, to uh, work with that. Um, and of course, data volumes are growing, even at our company, so we can't really handle that on our on-premise solution. Uh, after an interview with stakeholders and analysts, and, and uh, we came up with a kind of a short list of, of what we wanted from a technical standpoint anyway. We wanted to be able to scale in compute power and in volume with ease. Uh, we wanted to uh, implement new data sources easier. We didn't want to be as rigid or as, as uh, silo-based as we have been before. Uh, we wanted to improve on our visualizations and our uh, mobility for visualizations. And of course, we want to enable predictive and advanced analytics. So we took a tour with our management team and talked to them and got their approval. And we set off building the first kind of um, MVP, minimal valuable product, uh, and that's TV behaviors. So I'm going to show a couple of slides on how we did that, I hope. There you go. We have a service called Command Play. It's a service that you can use on your phone or tablet. You can use it in the web, or you can use it in your setup box. Um, so we went to those guys developing this and said, whenever you send a notification to the technical systems that a customer wants to view something, can you please send that to us as well? And they said, yeah, sure, we can. Uh, we put up an endpoint in uh, Azure, and we uh, started to use Stream Analytics. 
And stream analytics is a great tool. It can keep track on every, every stream that we send to it. It can, can keep track on how long a customer has viewed a specific channel or a specific show. Uh, but the data that comes in there is pretty raw. So we needed something to make that a little bit more pleasant to look at. So we got some metadata from the same guys, and they put that straight into our storage in Azure. Uh, and then this uh, stream analytics tool can take that metadata and in real time process that and put it up um, uh, to the, the raw data so that the program Y actually is uh, skiing on, on channel 4 or whatever. And we can push that into Power BI. And hence, we have a uh, live dashboard that anyone can look at within Comham on how many customers are looking at which channel and what programs right now. Or the, the last seven hours is how that's set up right now. And one benefit here is that when we bought Boxer, Boxer came into the same platform. We could actually just filter them out and make a new dashboard, a copy of the dashboard, and we had a Comham uh, or a Boxer Play dashboard read already. Um, what we also did was that since we already crunched this data, we already have the streaming analytics doing a little bit of work with uh, matching the metadata and stuff like that. We actually took that back to, to storage. So we just piled up a lot of data in storage to be able to use with our uh, kind of the main reason why we went cloud with SQL Data Warehouse. We've been looking at appliances before. Uh, we couldn't really justify the big investment that it would take uh, up front to make that investment. Uh, but with the SQL Data Warehouse, of course, we can start small and just keep on building. There's a slider you can pull. Uh, it goes faster and it go goes a lot more expensive when you pull it. But it's still, it's really good. Uh, you can pull it uh, up every night and you crunch through data and then you take it down during the day. And for SQL uh, Data Warehouse, it is like having, uh, it runs on 60 nodes all the time. It's like having 60 big machines running. So it's, it's really, really powerful. Um, and to be able to look at that data, we put it into the old trustworthy SSAS or analysis services. Uh, since that's what we, that's also one of the reasons why we chose to go with Azure. We've been doing SQL Server for uh, many years and we know the technology. We just needed to beef it up a bit. Uh, but we still use uh, SSAS, and we pull that up to, to uh, Power BI. So with this done, we can look at the live streaming data, and we can look at the historical data in kind of in the same fashion. And with the historical data, we also uh, add on a little bit more metadata. We can add on what kind of package the customer had, what services he had when he looked at this, uh, making sure for the content content people then to check the, how are our p packages performing and how, are we, uh, how should we be packaging channels. So customers looking at some channels that aren't in these packages and we should. So with this kind of setup, we know what channels are important to us and what's not. But then we had a, another, uh, th we thought about the other customers. Command Play is a great service, but it's pretty new. It's pretty small. We have, a, like I said, we have close to a million customers. Um, and most of those customers sit on a uh, setup box, and it's a TiVo setup box. We launched this a couple of years ago, and it's, uh, it's been a great platform for linear TV and for VODs and, and uh, pay per use. But this, this uh, setup box, it produces log files every day. In those log files, it tells us what's been recorded on the setup box, what you've been looking at on the setup box, uh, and stuff like that. But those log files are really, really small. What we tried to do was to take those log files and push them directly into SQL Data Warehouse. SQL Data Warehouse did not like that. It didn't work at all, since they're so small and so many files. So we needed another way to kind of uh, to make those files bigger or to, to merge them together or do something. And that's when we found uh, Data Lake Analytics. Uh, so with Data Lake Analytics, we can take those four little files every day from each customer, put them into one file. And then we take all the customer's files and put them into one even bigger file. And that big file can then be pushed into SQL Data Warehouse with ease. Uh, and by doing so, we still have all the metadata. We know uh, about the channels and the programs and the EPGs and stuff. By doing so, for uh, half a year, we got uh, 22 billion records in our fact tables. And we're throwing that around in uh, Power BI to be able to to look at what are the customers, how are they using our services, what are they looking at, and where should we uh, go from here. 
And the little star that we have on each of these uh, kind of Microsoft components is uh, the ability to pull that data up to machine learning. We can then use machine learning from all of these sources. Uh, and that's one of the, from our perspective, one of the big benefits is that we actually um, can use machine learning from, from pretty much anything. We can plug it into anything. Every, every one of these boxes talks uh, to each other and, and can use each other. Uh, so with machine learning, we can, I don't know, figure out what kind of packaging we should have, uh, if we should package channels uh, in different ways, uh, if customers are not using, uh, you get the idea. And we get API, performance, uh, API capabilities that we haven't had before. It's really easy to set up a new API for, customer, for any other service within Comham to, to talk to this, to our new uh, environment, basically. Um, and of course, the benefits of this for our content team is that they actually know what the customers are looking at. We don't have to buy that kind of information from other sources. And we've had cases where we, uh, the MMS uh, of Sweden is a company that tells us that everyone is looking at the Melody Festival on every Saturday. Uh, they send a top list for each week, and our top lists are not the same as the ones they claim that Sweden will be looking at. So it's quite interesting. We also found that the, the most recorded show uh, on the setup boxes is Dr. Phil, which is, I don't know, great to know, I guess. <laughs> um, so, what have we learned? Why, when we started with this, what have we learned um, when we set this up? The first thing, and the, kind of the most important thing, uh, which you can't read, but is that uh, we talked to the management team, we got their sign off that we, were, were, we could do this. We kind of thought that the uh, platform and the security people would be, hey, good for you guys, trying something new. Uh, it wasn't really like that. Uh, they kind of were a little bit protective about staying inside the house and not going out to the cloud and what was going to happen there. And the thing was that we, are, we, we had already done Office 365, so we already had the AD and the, in the Azure and stuff like that. But still, there was a lot of work to be done, and there still is a lot of work to be done to be able to make these services um, be as trusted as the online uh, on-prem services. So that's the thing to take in mind. If you want to start looking into this, talk to the guys that actually owns the firewalls, because those are <laughs> those are the enablers. Uh, so if that was the hard part, then there's a couple of uh, fun things as well. Uh, just to, to be able to set up uh, new services and try them out, uh, and then throw them away if they're not uh, that uh, interesting, is really, really good. We've been trying to, uh, Facebook analysis, Twitter analysis, and just you can be up and running in a couple of hours, and then if it doesn't mean anything, you throw it away. With the uh, Twitter uh, analysis, if you search for boxer, it's really funny because you have a lot of boxers, and then you have a lot of uh, underwear stuff coming in. So you can try it and throw it away. It's really good. Uh, and then on a technical note, there is a big difference between SQL Data Warehouse and SQL Server. Uh, we kind of knew that, but we didn't know exactly what it was, and we had to figure it out. Uh, but if you get it right, and you get SQL Data Warehouse running as it should, it is really, really powerful. Uh, if you don't, it's kind of like SQL Server, so, which is great, of course, but not, not, not at all like Data Warehouse. Um, and then uh, there comes a, a uh, there's a bullet about uh, differences, architectural differences or differences uh, in general. If we look at the old SQL Server platform that we've been using for a long time, we, uh, we kind of know how it works. It's SSIS, it's store procedures, and it's uh, the, uh, with Azure you get a lot more services. F for the when we started with this and we talked to uh, to Microsoft, we. Uh, how do we do this? We ask them, how do we do this? And they say, well, you could do it like this, or like that, or like that. And then there's like 15 or 16 different services that you actually can use to do the exact same thing, which is um, kind of mind-boggling at first. But when you try it out, since it is pretty easy to start and try it out, um, you, you get a hang of it. But it's, it, it's, uh, you get a, uh, the power of connecting streaming data with structured data and unstructured data, and they, they all can talk to each other. That's a, a real a benefit. But it is a lot more to, to um, take in and to stay up to date on. 
And the last uh, thing, we, since we want to be cutting edge, and especially our, our partner that we teamed up with, Random uh, Forest, wants to be cutting edge, we go with everything that is in preview, uh, just to try to, to be uh, in front of and, and take care of everything, that's look at everything that's happening. Uh, the documentation can be a bit, uh, well, non-existent. Uh, uh, but Microsoft support has been great. Uh, it's not that much written about uh, some of these services, um, but it's, uh, the support has been great. They really stepped up on that. Um, yeah. So what's next for us? Well, uh, we're going to continue. This was kind of the first project, and we're already into this continuing part, but we're going to continue to move from on-prem to, to cloud. Um, we've seen the benefits, and we, we know what it can do. Uh, it's a different mindset. We have to think about cost in another way. Otherwise, you just buy a license, and then that's for a year. And now you have to think about it every month, which is kind of, I guess, it's healthy. But, um, and we're uh, planning on rolling out Power BI for it, uh, as a tool for all of them. Uh, we have a couple of different tools today, but we're planning on going pretty much all Power BI. Uh, especially for the dashboarding and reporting for those 80% of users that don't do advanced analytics. And then kind of a technical note, but we, we want to upgrade to Data Factory V2. That's a big, uh, it's a big thing. Uh, the, the first version is, uh, is uh, well, it was released. Uh, I don't think it was really that, uh, it wasn't thought through. Uh, the V2 is going to be really, really great. And I think... That's it for me. Good. Ah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.